do. Oh boy, we're on, we're on a YouTube video now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hey everybody. Welcome to the 2-Hour Track Challenge. My name is Ben underscore Burns. Today we'll be writing a song in two hours or less. I have a special guest today, my buddy Shaka Panda, um, who we, we kind of talk every week or so anyway, but um, I had to change my schedule around because of uh, Toots getting fixed tomorrow. Um, and I figured we'll just try to see if we can have some kind of collaboration on stream because uh, Shaka has been learning music theory and stuff. So I have. Uh, yeah. So I, I don't know how this is going to go. I figure it's going to be kind of a weird deviation. Remember um, to save. Hey, everybody, remember to save. But I, I think that um, in the future, this is kind of one direction I might want these streams to go where it's kind of like pseudo collaboration, pseudo kind of learning from each other and. I'm going to still have a timer this time, but in the future we might not have a timer at all. Like, I, I've been talking about kind of ending, or gracefully closing out my chapter of the two-hour track challenge uh, for a while now, and that's still happening at the end of this year. But in the meantime, um, we're going to give this a try. So we're just going to talk about whatever, um, and we're going to make some music, and I'm going to start the timer, and we can go. So, awesome. yeah. Uh, I, have you ever heard I, I don't know Shaka but have you ever heard of like the like the rubber duck uh, rubber ducking uh, it usually works with uh, programming or whatever but um, have you heard of that before rubber ducking yeah so I basically mean, with like audio ducking to like make space for no streams, this is this that's is what ducking that's yeah. what comes up for when I hear ducking yeah so rubber ducking when it comes to computer programming is basically having like a, a an object on your desk that you talk your problems through yeah it, you use it to solve problems like you that. basically verbalize your your process cool, cool. um you verbalize your process into toward the the duck the inanimate object and and then you can kind of just uh maybe solve your problems through that and that's that's one of the w things I was thinking of when I was thinking about doing this kind of collaborative stream with you, where it's just like it's kind of rubber ducking, right? Where it's just like I'm I'm talking through my process in a way that might be interesting to others. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's kind of like um, you know, it's, it's just a sort of pa uh, a passive co-pilot. Yeah. You know, sounding wall kind of person. Yeah, like that. Like that. Okay. Well. Yeah, so that's that's kind of my thought. I'm I'm trying to maybe mess around with other with other avenues and like like I said, you're you're one of the people that have been learning music theory uh, just kind of on your own on your own time. And I I really I really think that that's amazing and I think that it would be cool if we found a way to um hey, Kenaku. Um What's it would up, be Kenaku? Yeah, it it would be a cool opportunity to kind of learn music theory together with other people because I am by no way an expert Oops. but I just kind of laid down some pads and hey toxic what's up thank you for the resub well, you know me I love pads <laughs> yeah So I, I, yeah, I, I'm not really sure what my plans are for today, but I I, I would uh, as oh, sorry I would appreciate any kind of input and we're just, we're just messing around. I think one thing that I need to do more of is take this stuff less seriously. I've been kind of in tryhard mode the last couple weeks, and I need to I need to <laughs> stop being so flippin' sweaty when I make music. So. Yeah, it, it's it's like up to you. I know I know our system for kind of sh screen sharing and audio sharing and everything is a little janky right now, and I would love to try to fix that. But if you have thoughts, if you're listening and you you wanna you wanna provide ideas, like I would love to hear it. Sure. And alternate, additionally, if you want me to try to explain what's going on and the, the process that I came to these chords and everything, I'm happy to do that too. Yeah, I'd actually be interested in that. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that these are, um, you know, chords that are, um, you know, 
obviously I've been studying basic music theory, that's how you start. Yeah. And so a lot of the chords you're looking at are either three and sometimes four key chords. And so I'm curious how you're picking the chords you're using here. Are these more sort of jazz inspired chords? I understand that jazz chords that are often used in jazz tend to you know, have more Oops. extensions. Uh, things like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually this is this is basically just uh, this is um, an octave with a dominant, and then the chord is above. So that's generally how that's generally how I construct my chords. Is I have I have my left hand doing some very basic stuff because I'm less coordinated in my left hand. Um, um, I see. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So it's it's uh, C minor because most of my songs are in C minor. I'm going one. Six, whoops, one, six, seven, and then three, one, or am I doing three, one? No, two, one. I don't know what I'm doing over here. What the hell am I doing over here? <laughs> oh, five, one. So there's an inversion in there. Nice. So for the bass line, it's basically. But the last chord is inverted, so it's. So yeah, I think it, I think, I know it's, it's not anything complicated, but that's okay. Like having, having seventh chords and, and more jazzy stuff on top of that would be neat, but. So then what is it that as you're going makes you go, oh, I want to I want to add inversion in there. That, what, what draws you towards that? Uh, I did it accidentally here, <laughs> but um, <laughs> gen generally uh, it's it's the the movement of the notes. That's right, right? Yeah. So if you had this, especially with the bass, like if you had the bass go all the way down there and then back up, it, it's a bit awkward. Um, so instead of, I'm um, sorry, I should have done that on the piano. It's easier to hear. So it's, it, the inversions just, yeah, it, like Husk said, it, it makes it easier for the chords to flow into each other instead of like jumping, you know, that sounds way better than because the bass note isn't dropping so far, there's a lot more continuity sure. between the chords. So you're able to flow between the different notes you're looking to get a hold of to, you know, work your way through the, the kind of story you're telling, but at the same yeah. time, it's not as jarring to the listener dropping so much of the pitch. Exactly. Yeah, you, you basically, it, it, yeah, it preserves the continuity. It doesn't make, you can still play the chords you want, but you, you it's less jarring to uh exactly jarring is the right word so i don't know what i'm gonna do with this i don't know if any drum loops are really gonna speak to me in this one but i figure i can always look because these are a little too energetic actually that last one was kind of nice i mean yeah i'm i'm really going for yeah, something something that's a lot simpler this time around partially because i'm trying this format and i know i know shaka you i don't think you can stick around for the whole two hours anyway or if you can that's great but um I can definitely be here for at least the first hour yeah yeah exactly but it would be it i, I just figure that you know we'll we'll sit down we'll just chat and hang out and then uh we can all go on our ways well something i'm kind of curious about uh, you know if we're looking for ideas or directions is yeah i find um especially when you have something like a pad um, i find side chaining pads to th two things is interesting um, yeah that's something i'd like to learn more about it really it always makes my head kind of bob whenever a side chain is going on and from like from a technical until you really catch it yeah are you talking like from a technical perspective or are you talking about something like um, i mean like like you know something simple like side chaining a pad to a kick and it dips a little bit every time that so it kind of has a surging sort of energy to it that is synced up with the, the drums or something like that. That's kind of what I'm imagining uh, when it comes to side chain. Yeah. And it can mean lots of things. <laughs> it does have a lot of meanings. But so this is side chained to the kick. Uh, yeah. 
almost kind of the same yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. You can hear it. You can hear it ducking out when the volume spikes. Mm-hmm. So basically, what it what a side chain does on a very basic level is it it ties the volume of one thing to the volume of another thing. And compression is a very nuanced topic, but that's kind of the the very broad explanation of that. So what I'm doing is I'm tying the volume of the pads to dip when the volume of the kick or when the volume of the bass of the drum loop goes up. And what that does, it, what that does is that allows the kick to breathe better. It allows it um, to have more space to exist. Um, and, and usually what you do with this kind of stuff is you, you group everything together. You kind of just have an everything group and you just drop the side chain on that. So it's basically everything that isn't drums is getting side chained. So unless you're trying to accentuate the side chain to create that kind of surging kind of dance sound, it would otherwise be used to mix and help things come through that would otherwise be buried in a complex mix. Am I hearing that right? Yep, exactly. It's it's it, it's both a tool for for accentuating certain things within the song, like from a from an artistic perspective, but from a technical sp- perspective, it's also useful for um, mix downs and and making sure that things have space to breathe um, sure. beyond just the um, the normal stuff. So yes, yeah. So could you link something a side chain to um, other effects as well to like oscillate a um, LFO or things like that as well. Not in Ableton, unfortunately. Ableton does have kind of limitations when it comes to that stuff, which is unfortunate. I I think Bitwig allows you to, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, I, I and I having said that, I think Max for Live does allow you to do some interesting things when it comes to relational like volume to oscillator kind of stuff. Oh, cool. Been trying to sell Bitwig again. Yeah, that's. I do. I do want to try it. I, I think Bitwig is is definitely something I'm going to look into more. Um, but right now, I just don't have the time to learn. But again, that that can be like some one of my projects for next year. That might be too loud. See that? That doesn't flow well for me. But um. Oops, turn that off. I like the preview mode, but man, it's annoying sometimes. <laughs> Especially if you're moving groups of stuff, it's like a horror yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah. So. This is so this is like a very pleasant loop. I don't know if I want to keep the drums though. I do kind of like it just the way it is. Yeah. I like that as well as well. It feels more sort of spacious and calming. Yeah. And I was talking with Shaco before we started streaming. And I got this recording of a bird earlier today that uh, was stuck in a vet, not stuck, but it was kind of hanging out in a vestibule for uh, for the grocery store. And I was like, maybe I can do something with this. It's not super tonal though, so I'm not entirely sure, but... It sounds like it could turn into ear candy of some kind. Maybe if you like put a slow attack on it. Yeah, yeah, we could. Ear candy. I'd like to hear your definition of that. Is it just kind of some sparkly thing that happens in the background? Um, I would say ear candy to me is something that isn't necessarily isn't necessarily confined to or responsive to um, like, like the structure of the rest of the song. It's like more atonal, arrhythmic, just kind of kind of add yeah. su- add add like texture, flavors, stuff. Okay. Um, and, you yeah. know, sometimes it'll have a bit of a melody to it. You know, I could imagine some sort of tinkling kind of sort of thing could occur as ear candy. But again, it's not like necessarily echoing the melody or the bass line. It's 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 more about uh, it's more about adding. Like I mean, you could have the sound of an airplane taking off be ear candy in a surging rise at some point. You know, and that's yeah. why you said something that's kind of atonal and that chirp and all of that echo that shh from the echo yeah. of the bird feels like it could be some interesting um, you know, right. flavor 
And Kenaku, I like your idea of uh, chopping up these drums. Let's do that. So what I did is I put a Valhalla Shimmer um, put to both. I put two on there. One to ascend and one to descend. So I don't know what that's going to sound like, but we're going we're gonna to find out together in a minute. Oh, cool. um, and then now I have... Oops, no, this has to be on Slice. Cool. Um, so I am going to... I have to reconnect the, the side chain. Um, drams. Just put that you can tell in. Tell with all the terms I'm using, like your candy, that I'm just watching a lot of Andrew Wong. <laughs> oh yeah, I I I haven't watched Andrew Wong in a while. Um, I like his videos, but sometimes sometimes they they don't get on my nerves, but they're just kind of they're they're not made for me. It kind of feels like. Interesting. Remember to say. But what would you say is their demographic then, in comparison? I don't I don't know. It's like it's music music education, which is very valuable. Um. And there, there's, there's like, yeah, product sponsorships is not my thing either, That's but, That's real. but it's also just like he, he, um, he does a lot of music education, which is, like I said, very valuable, but it's also just kind of like not, not directed at me, which is fine. Like not everything on the well, internet has to exist for my edification, but <laughs> sure, right. hey, when wolves cry out. What's up? Yeah, I mean, I definitely come across it as I'm going deeper on musical ideas that I'm coming across in my courses, and no surprise, he's a popular YouTuber, and so he comes up, and I'm looking into, like, how does, how does modular synthesis really work? And that's interesting, and, well, what about this, and what about that? And yeah. And he has some sort of ultra-slick, you know, <laughs> video about something. Yeah, and, and maybe it, it might just be because it's so well-produced. That might that might bother me. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. it, it is it is almost yeah. He does have a kind of ultra produced energy, which again like is not his fault. Like he definitely has a style and he goes for it. And I like I super respect him for it. But it's just like it's just not for me, and it, that's fine. Why are these not playing right? Oh right, this is on monophonic. I don't know if this um if this drum loop's gonna work. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bet that I'll feel probably similarly husk, because it that's absolutely where yeah. I'm at is yeah, early it's, on and it's, it's been valuable. Yeah. Uh, for sure. But I'm watching less and less of his videos and getting more sort of surgical about like I would love a geeky breakdown of a particular thing and largely not just watching whatever comes out which is what i was doing for a time yeah and like the, he he's he's very good at explaining stuff and going diving into some music theory and, and other important yeah. things like that but again like i i have such a great understanding of that hey slam house what's up buddy oh i'm i'm behind on my piano solos for first of all i have to unmute there we go so Sarsen, thank you so much for the follow a minute ago. How you doing, Slam? How was your song today? You were doing like chill wave stuff, right? Oh man, thank you so much for the for the subs. You gave a sub to Twiggly Bits. That means that Twiggly Bits is lurking here. <laughs> yeah. I really appreciate all the all the love. It means a lot to me. Helps keep the lights on around here. Well, the light. It's just this one. Well, that but... sounds like fun. Can I... <laughs> Okay, um, back to work. So, yeah. Nice, Slam. Oh, that, that means a lot, Wolves. I saw that you followed me on on Twitch and, and helped me out on Patreon and stuff, so it means a lot to me. Um, yeah, we're trying something different today and having, uh, having Shaka, my buddy Shaka Panda hang out in the in a discord call while we while we jam out and 
I'm going a little slower with the music, but that's okay. It's it's better to have fun conversations than to, like I said, I've been I've been kind of doing being a little bit of a tryhard when it comes to music lately on these streams. Oh, now there's a cat here. Here, everybody say hi to Butter real quick. Oh. He loves jumping on my Butter. jumping on my desk and eating my stuff. Yeah, he's very sweet, but oh, he's no. he's very high energy. He's a sweet little boy. Yep. Go hang out with your mom. Butter! <laughs> yep. Okay, so the the hat in this sample is not great, so I'm going to bolster it with another one. Um, so that should hopefully help. Oh man, I hecked that up. Uh, where is fold? That moved lately. There it is. <laughs> Okay, this goes there. There we go. <laughs> Are you a file system? <laughs> Not sure if I like that hat sound. It has too much of a low end. We can, we can scoop that out pretty easily. Because I'm really just looking for that kind of like the, the clicky sound to help keep the, keep the rhythm. Excuse me. Um, yeah, so I don't like this hat exactly. So I think that bird sound turned out kind of cool. It's in the background. But like you said, it de definitely has that ear candy kind of sound where it just kind of exists and it floats around. of that area you were in i mean darn near anything is is yeah just feels space you know, it feels spacious yeah and like the the area was big enough where you could actually hear an echo at like i don't know like 60 milliseconds or something it wasn't a lot but it was enough to where you could actually hear it kind of in, in the i recorded it with my phone so it didn't really didn't what really is, what is something that you do to make something feel more expansive is it what the word comes to mind is auto pan or something like that with the um, stereo, field? stereo widening that i think is what you're talking okay. about yeah um so there's there's a lot of different ways to do that but wider is the one that i use um so like if you want a sample of that here this is without wider you can hear so what it does, what wider does anyway, there's there's a lot of different ways to do it, but what it does is it chops the, the frequency spectrum that's going through it into, uh, I don't know how big, but small pieces, and it starts pulling those uh, away from each other. So like they oh, get they get shif shuffled to the left and the right channel more and more so and then I think over a hundred percent it like kind of uh, I don't know if it overdrives that or if it just does if it just doesn't more but. But in this case, like, that's exactly what you want, because um, this basically, it doesn't make the sample louder, but it makes it sound louder because it's so much more present. Yeah, yeah, and it's very shimmery at this point, very, it creates yeah. that nice, yeah, yeah, that's neat. Yeah, no, that's good. But yeah, stereo separation and stereo width is, is a really important thing that I forget a lot, um, including just regular panning. I don't... I don't remember to do that stuff very frequently, and that's something I need to get better at. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I don't, I don't really have any plans for this song right now. I'm just kind of know if that's the right vibe remember to pan yeah so yeah i i don't really know where this song is going but at least we have a start and that's fine would strings be something interesting to explore yeah we can try that i mean we can just duplicate the the current thing and add a layer of strings to it um i do like farlight quite a bit oh maybe ableton just decided to poop the bed 
we'll see. Um, <clears throat> I do like Farlight a lot because it's um, vocal based. Um, and like all the samples in Farlight are related to the uh, vocals and stuff. And I, and I really like the amount of um, texture that that gives. But having, there we go, string ensemble. Vintage, yeah, that might actually work really well. So let's just toss this in here and see. It's a little loud, but I think that would work. Especially if we just... So this is this is a this is an issue of mixing really. So by itself, and then if we had this just the way it was before, it's just first of all it's really loud. But even if you lower the volume, the the vocal stuff and the string stuff just intersect far too much. So one thing one thing you can do is you can just scoop all of that out with an EQ. And then there's a cat on my mouse. Um, ah. So you can hear that, like, both of the instruments are a little bit more present without getting each other's way. Right. And is that just because, I mean, technically, the frequencies that they're vibrating at are too similar and they are just sort of. Yeah, they're, into each other yeah, they're getting each other's space. way. So if, you, yeah, so if you look, the EQ for this is, like, really around the low 100 range. And the EQ for this is now more in the 1K range. Gotcha. So, I know. Yeah, that yeah. sculpting sound and making space for different instruments, and it's, it's so fascinating. The mixing layers, so it's, interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a profession in itself. Like, I mean, well, that's, sure. why, that's why people do mixing and mastering as jobs, you know? We're gonna have to start messing with volumes and stuff too, just because everything is very loud. Well, now that's very loud. Yeah, we could definitely change the pattern. And we could do that the easy way by throwing an arpeggiator on here and just seeing what it sounds like. Um, All right, our attack is low. It's kind of the problem with this. It's you kind of you run into uh, some problems when it comes to I don't know, maybe. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Okay, let's let's actually cut this back a little bit. I'm gonna have to quantize this as well, just because if we're running an arpeggiator, we have to make sure that this stuff snaps to the grid. So we have some weirdness going on with like these kind of floating notes, but overall that sounds kind of neat. Hey kitties. So like what we can do with this, yeah, that is really cool. I like that. So what we can do with this is just kind of toss it over here because I don't think it's going to kind of work at the beginning. But it's definitely like something we can build of some kind. Yeah. Butter, buddy. Yeah, I know that's something that you want to steal and eat, but you can't. Ugh. Go play with your mom. The other problem with streaming these days is it's it's more difficult to manage two kittens who are 
running around. <laughs> they, they haven't settled into the kitty cam mode yet. Oh, no. <laughs> well, they hear me talking and they think it's time for stuff to happen. That's funny. Yeah. Also, another thing we can do with this is we can have an attack on it. Mm, maybe not. I don't know. That's not bad. It's incredible how much attack and decay can change the sound of something. It really is. It's wild. Yeah. I've been playing around with a little bit of synths and stuff recently and playing around with some modular synthesis and... Take care, you know, Kaneku. Yeah. To Actually, save. just recently, um, picked up a, um, a Kai MP... Uh, MPK play. Yeah. Uh, instead of just their normal MIDI. Yeah. And it's kind of fantastic because at any moment I can just click use internal sounds and I can just work something out right there. And it yeah. comes out of a little speaker on the device. And I'm messing around with the attack and decay a lot because you could have those kind of readily available for all the instruments. And it's, it's neat how dramatically different something can be with just those two, let alone everything else. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Like it's, it's a lot of fun to mess with stuff. Um, and just kind of experiment and see how things go. So I'm trying to I'm trying to think of like we we have a we have a good loop, but like we don't have that connected. hook, and we we need to find a hook, something to like actually bring all of this together and make it interesting to listen to. And sometimes I think I think Kaneku suggested like yeah a vintage synth kind of thing. Holy cow, that's loud! Why is that so loud? There we go. Sorry about that. Um, Yeah, so this this is more what I was thinking of. Um, so we have the arpeggio that kind of does a basic melody, but we can also have a kind of an a counter melody to that. I don't know if I like some of the things that happen on this synth, but I can fix that in the end. Mm. Yeah. So, I'm going to take that and mess. I'm starting to feel there. like I'm in a cave. Like, yeah. like, exploring a cave in a video game or something. Almost. Yeah. I can dig that. I think that that works really well. Um, I think that some of the that way that synth uh, has that kind of echoey quality to it. it yeah. feels like it's ping ponging against some sort of a internal wet cave somehow. Yeah, I'm trying to make it a little less ping pongy, but what does this LFO do if it? Oh, geez, that's the speed of it. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, jeez. <laughs> Okay, well, we can also just kind of scoop off some of the top end, too. Yeah, it does It does have that kind of mystery to it. Yeah, there's, there's you know, for some reason, often images and uh, scenarios pop into my head when I'm listening to something very specific. Yeah, yeah and I mean, you know, that's... Like exploration kind of energy. Yeah, and I mean, I really like that about making music in general. Excuse me, because it allows you to do that kind of stuff, and it, it has the ability to evoke things. And that's important. Yeah, that's something I find myself interested in studying further as I kind of look forward and just probably I'm just going to be in the habit of consuming some music something you know training for a while yeah we have i have a good little system of just doing a little every day and something that came up for me would be interesting would be to look into um scoring in particular because that's very specifically let's manipulate emotions let's put us in a place yeah and get clear about like the machinery mechanics of why what puts you where and how and 
I think that's going to be really interesting to learn more about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's important and not something that I that I consciously do, but it's something that I really want to get better at. Um, because, like, there's there's so many things that you can do, but I don't always think about them. <laughs> and it's it, part of that is because I'm, you know, have the limitation of the two-hour track challenge. But, yeah, take care, Husk. Thanks for hanging out, buddy. Later, Husk. Um, but, like, the, just the ability to... to understand like the the physical placement of where this song is taking place whether it's in like an event or if it's like a a, a landscape or if it's you know like a vignette or something yeah take care toxic um like yeah, yeah, yeah the ability to essentially like give the the song a narrative oh you're saying goodbye to the other people that were leaving oh, what did you say to other people <laughs> But, yeah, the ability to just, like, give these songs a little bit more meaning than just, hey, this is a cool beat, you know? It's important to me. Come on. I'd love to hear this whole chord instead of just part of it. Uh, okay. Oh, that's why. Okay, yeah. I was like, why does this chord sound so bad? It's just this note is off. There we go. So I, I was just adding a little bit of variation to the to the chords. Gotcha. So, like, at this point, you know, we're a little early, but I think we need to kind of start figuring out, like, what we want to do with, like, where we want this narrative to go, or if it's just something that we just... Like, this is kind of just a more of a still life than a vignette or a story. Because I think that this sounds pretty good. But we need to find direction for it. Or, like, a purpose to it, I guess. And I like the idea of, like, a cave. But some, I mean, basically what I'm getting at is I need to figure out a name for the song because that kind of dictates where things go from here. I might actually um, lower some of the very high end of this because it gets a little too sizzly. What do you mean by sizzly? Um, so if you hear this... That high end, there's just a lot of this that's just like white noise, pink noise, that kind of stuff. And well, I, I like that it um, it sticks around. It sticks around a little too long. So if I kind of just uh, level out the high end a little bit, it kind of makes it fall into the background quicker. Oh, I got you, got you. And that's, that, that's basically just a symptom of how Shimmer works. It's just a granular um, delay chamber. So, so it, it, it approaches the uh, screaming fairies tweeter situation. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, careful. yeah, a little bit. So it's like I just wanted to make sure that it was less obnoxious. <laughs> I mean, I could also go in here and I can change the feedback of these as well, which would probably help. Yeah, I think what's what's neatest of, what's neatest what I find most uh, <laughs> mind shaft interesting fairies. about that yeah? is uh, the texture that it brings to it. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yeah, the thing I like about Shimmer is because it, it, it allows the audio to shimmer or scintillate or whatever you want to say. Like, it has this this feeling of, like, um, light to it, which I really enjoy. Yeah, we can do that. Mineshaft fairies. <laughs> I mean, that makes me want to... I'm not going to do this because it would be dumb, but... Where's my Navi sample? <laughs> oh no. Maybe I don't have it anymore? Where is it? Or is it... A sample crate? Maybe I don't have it anymore. I have Kirby. 
Or maybe it's just called hay. Yeah. So I do have it, but I don't think I'm going to use it here. I don't think it fits. I mean, toxic, yeah, scintillate. I mean, it's a, it's a cool word, and I think that... Uh, I think that it would work. Here we go. We could use that sound, though. Hello. <laughs> mm -hmm. The the kind of the intro sound. We could use this as like a riser, actually. So we can basically just pull this in here and use this as a as a way to transition between sections, kind of like a reverse symbol or something. Um, I wish I could make it longer. I can make it longer due to the magic of granular synthesis. Yeah. So yeah, what we did is we basically just took that, that sample and we kind of stretched it out. It's a little video gamey, but I think it's neat. Um, it's also like a little, candy. yeah. It's 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 also like almost a little Easter egg for people who actually understand where that sample originally came from, which is also fun. I'm getting a lot of kind of like water stuff with this somehow. Not necessarily underwater, but mm -hmm. like um, I don't know. It's a yeah. That I feel like I would want to explore somehow. Sure. Yeah. I don't, well, I don't necessarily mean drips or something, but, um, I don't know. Okay, so these are, I think these are a little too low pitch. Hmm. Something feels weird about those. Yeah, like water in a cave or something. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the idea of toxic. I don't know. I think that might work. But, yeah. Um, I'm going to scoot that over again. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Because I do have like a lot of water drips and stuff, which could work really well here. I could also see somehow doing some sort of a footstep with a lot of echo or something. That might mm -hmm. be interesting to emphasize the, you know, cavernousness of the vibe. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of, that's... This kills us right now. <laughs> Yeah, um, and that's kind of like the the balance that I want to. That's the one I was. This is the sample I was looking for. Um, it's kind of the balance that I need to figure out because as much as I want to be like, hey, this is song a song about a cave and maybe exploring a cave and all that. I don't want to just be like, this is a cave. Like, I want it. I want to leave it up to the imagination a little bit too. Gotcha. So, you're not wrong. Well, as soon as Toxic said Mineshaft, I immediately thought, and this is not necessarily for this song, but how interesting it would be to use the sort of repetitive tint of a mine cart in yeah. a song sometime. Yeah, no, that would be cool. It, obviously, yeah, it wouldn't work for this one, but... Yeah, no, not for the, but that did pop up. I was like, oh, that's interesting. So... <laughs> Minecarts. So I've used this sample before and I really like it. But obviously we need other things to happen in here because right now it's there's nothing really going on.
So yeah, we need to kind of figure out, and a lot of the process for me making songs anyway is very iterative. It's just like, you start you start at the beginning and you kind of just move toward the end and then you're done. Um, so... So what eight, might, eight. are you looking for structurally to happen here? Are you wanting to, you know, rise to some kind of a crescendo or are you looking sure to spelling that right. you know, have a couple of different sections that are distinct that kind of you oscillate back and forth between like i'm curious how yeah you, yeah like so how like you feel forward with this you know kind of making it you know make it up as you go yeah so like this section would be kind of an introduction it, it takes a bunch of themes and it like it presents it all and sure. then i was kind of thinking about like what would we do if we wanted to move on those themes and like try different things with them um and I don't really know where we want to go with that from there. You know, like, do we want to take this and do we want to, like, have a piano solo? Do we want to have kind of a breakdown-y section here that we bring back for, you know, other things later on? Or I don't really know. I also feel like I need to tighten this drum up a little bit. Sometimes it's easy as just adding a little bit of overdrive. This is certainly the kind of song that you could absolutely hit hit hard with some sort of a um, surge type, surging type sound or, you know, have a, I don't want to say a drop necessarily, but, you know, a kind of like, you know, lull you into kind of calm and then whoosh, hit it. Yeah. No, I actually like that. I think that that, that works well. Um, so we could uh, go like this maybe. make metal drums <laughs> um yeah like i i so basically my complaint with this drum loop is that it didn't have as much presence in the high end so if you overdrive the high end that helps a little bit but if you do it too much then it just turns into a big old mess so like i'm overdriving the high end and then i'm chopping it off i'm chopping the transients off a little bit And then, like, I like your I like your suggestion on, like, bringing in some more aggressive, not aggressive, but kids stay off the like power I'm button. Yeah. Something like you're you're heading in a kind of synthy direction, and since synth, you know, can come in with a pretty intense kind yeah. of surging, kind of almost like uh, the whole um, yeah. orchestra hitting you all at once. You know? Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, look at these sounds and they might be loud so i apologize yeah but something like this it sounds obnoxious right now but what you can do with this is you can like do a high cut on it and then so you can like take that and then bring it in Oh, that's way too bassy. <laughs> um, right, because this has to be up. I don't know if that necessarily works for this, but, you know, it's experimenting. Oh, yeah, Infinite Third's great. What's Infinite Third? Uh, he is a streamer. He does uh, guitar looping kind of jams. Cool. Yeah, he's a cool dude. Come on. Play. This might, yeah, this might not work as well as I wanted, but that's part of the process. Mm. I guess if I leave the the bass in there, that helps. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot of ways to make this a little bit more obnoxious too, so it's we we have <laughs> we have options. Oh, able Do to. you feel like obnoxious has a use in music at times? Oh yeah, it certainly feels like it may. So where would it fit in? Like, what would you use that tool as? Um, it it it's situational. Like, if you're if you want to show off a particular thing, or if you want to basically convey an emotion of like um, 
of anxiety or something like that. Sometimes, sure. sometimes being obnoxious. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a song that I put out forever ago called um, Deep Toot. Where this this song, um, like later on, it's just like there's there's all these pitch uh, pitch changers, uh, scale changes. Okay, okay. So it's like on its own, the 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 instruments are kind of obnoxious. <laughs> But yeah. like when when put all together, I think that it kind of comes together as a, as a really interesting uh, whole. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Let's uh yeah let's get let's let's clean this up and then I think we can uh, we can try to try to work with this a little bit more. Um, I wish that this had a little bit more options i could bring it to a sampler i guess but because this is too that's too much so another thing i've been doing a lot lately is i've been adding super saws to everything which is a lot of fun but also kind of also obnoxious <laughs> um and i don't know if it's gonna work here i've just been i mean i'm just kind of flailing around today it's all good an old hand one song we played a bunch of times yeah yeah exactly there, there's there's so many ways that you can um interesting toxic mess with that kind of stuff so you can do this and you can get a pretty good pretty good super saw just by going like this that does not sound right why does that not sound right oh right because it has to be an actual saw <laughs> there we go <laughs> There we go, there we go. Now we're getting to that kind of symphonic hit sound. Yeah, yes. So I've been I've been maybe overusing this, but I don't really care. Um I think it sounds pretty cool. Um I don't know hey, about more synth more better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about this bass, but we can mess with that more too. Sometimes just throwing a saturator on it. And just like really blessed and the hell out of it can okay so let's mess with these drums now i think we need a different so drum sample saturator provide specifically um so it does a it does a couple things but saturation is generally raising the volume of something beyond what um the the waveform can allow so it goes over oh, over the peak like the the max peak uh for the waveform so it basically starts cropping off the top of the sine wave um and then what you do is you lower the volume again so you're not like distorting you, you keep the distortion but you don't have the volume so it's basically um uh, like a compression used for evil <laughs> yeah yeah kind of yeah so like if you did if you did like hsl in photoshop if you did like high saturation in photoshop you like blow out all the colors then you kind of bring them back so they're a little bit they don't like melt you <laughs> melt your eyes right gotcha. does that make sense <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah oh god we could go right into <laughs> I don't know if this would Yeah, what the hell we can try it. Um So, yeah, it's saturation is very useful for bringing out um qualities of a sound without making it like super loud. But yes, compression used for evil is a very good distillation of that. <laughs> Okay, I think that that actually works pretty well. 
we're gonna have to do that feels good. some surgery on the rest of this though better yeah well if you have questions about literally anything like I am here to help like that's that's really the point of these streams and I really want to just um, I want to enable people to learn how music works it's always nice to get like a plain language explanation of things uh, from you and then I also appreciate like how you will also tend to talk about like okay and here's how and why that might get used instead of you know just getting a dictionary definition yeah that you you know it's really different yeah no absolutely and that that's like the whole point like if you want to just listen and chill and kind of osmose all of this stuff that's fine too but like i definitely want to make sure people are aware that like this is this is a stream in which there's a two-way flow of conversation it's not just it's not just me talking Actually, in this case, I want to bring that down. <laughs> okay, that's the direction we're going, I guess. Um, the nice thing about louder music is that you can be a little bit more of a sledgehammer instead of a surgeon. Um, <laughs> which uh, helps a bit. So, yeah, I'm just trying to think of how we move forward with this. So this is a bit loud. That's getting me. That's making me dance in my seat without even yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty wild what a what a simple drum loop can do. Um, that has too slow of an attack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to try to mess around with uh, with this. I, I I feel like we need something something else in kind of the upper upper registers. Can I filter for the bass, oscillate with the beast beat like a bar ascending? Yes. Yep. I'm, I think that's a really good idea. Um, I I want to do this first because that's way too much. Um, just to um, just to give it a little bit more space, I think. Kind of like I don't know. I for some reason I I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing fancy, but... It also kind of reminds me of Zelda. Um, kind of Ocarina <clears throat> vibes. Yeah. Well, these are wrong. But yeah, we can, we can go into here, and one thing we can do with this is we can actually uh, put uh, some resonance on it. And then we could definitely heck around with um, how this flows. And we can probably get some wild sounds from that. And this is your, your water banding high cut right now? Yeah, so this is this is the high cut. You can see you can see the the EQ sweeping down here. Gotcha. It gives it it gives it a little bit more motion. It allows it to move around more.
So another thing is, interestingly, like neuro bases like this. Oh come on, uh, neuro bases like this. They exist in the mid and high range. So actually removing the sub from this and allowing the actual sub base to play through, I think will actually sound better. So. Because otherwise, these two bases are going to start conflicting with each other, and I don't know how much you know about, like, uh, phase cancellation and other stuff with sine waves, but if um, if these two instruments are, like, out of phase, they're not going to complement each other, they're going to cancel each other, and then you lose all of the base. Just kind of like ripples in a pond, yes. sort of smashing into each other. Yep, it's exactly like That's that. You're, they're either going to amplify each other or destroy each other, and you don't really want either, so you just remove one from the equation. Remember to save. Hey, but remember to save. I actually have to step away and get ready for a call. But oh, good, buddy. Super interesting and delightful to yeah. be here watching all this happen and hearing it go. Yeah, I think this it works is okay this way uh, audio wise. I'm sure we want to figure it out more details later, but this is yeah. bad. I can totally be happy to do it again sometime. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this this worked really well and I'm and I'm glad we were able to try it out and, and mess around and I I like where we are with this song and I've got like an hour left to mess around with it and see where we go with it. So and... we're not we're not hamstringing you time wise by having another person to chit chat with live. No, I, I don't I don't I don't feel like it. Like I I feel like I got a little distracted at the beginning talking about stuff, but it's also the first time we've done this and you know, I'm I I like talking to people about this kind of stuff and it's you know, but I think once we got into the groove, we we made some progress and I there was definitely a creative block moving from this to something and we definitely did. So, yeah. I don't know. We'll give it a try again some other time and see how it goes. But yeah, I appreciate uh, you hanging out and giving this little experiment a try. Yeah, my pleasure, man. It was fun to come. Yeah. So uh, that, I don't know if you want to if you want to post anything about yourself before you go, you're welcome to talk about yourself a bit and then you can log off. Oh, um, sure. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, that's where I'm headed off to do right now is um, I, uh, I, I coach folks uh, specifically uh, with uh, creativity and leadership stuff. Um, you know, focusing in particular on overcoming creative blocks and getting access to your creativity and inspiration stuff that we all kind of have a kind of ebb and flow roller coaster -y type relationship with at some point as creatives. And um, I uh, have, you know, uh, really gone deep on that. Lots of research, lots of uh, development, lots of working with clients and have found some very powerful kind of levers to push on and, and uh, you know, pop us out of that get stuck thing. So that's that's often what I do uh, with my clients. But, you know, that and many other things, because a lot of the time what's getting in the way of your art is uh, some personal lifestyle type stuff. And so mm -hmm. you got to work out some of those things, too, and like make a life that invites that and makes it available and, you know, not force it. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm headed to do right now. And awesome. uh, I love doing that. And so that uh, that link you got there at the top of the screen that's me if you ever want to chat yeah. uh, get to know me or anything I always like to offer uh, two no charge sessions for people to get to know me and uh, get any of their questions answered and see if they'd like to work together so uh, no stress no worries if anybody's at all curious you know you're more than welcome to hit me up I would love to visit and get to know you and talk about what's going on and oh able to know, see if we yeah. can uh, you know, get after some fun, creative work together. It's always, uh, always yeah. my favorite part of all this is helping people, you know, give their gifts out there in the world. And, you know, more art in the world is like that's thumbs up for me. <laughs> any kind of part of that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll let you get to it, but I really appreciate you hanging out and, and being a part of this. And, you know, it was cool yeah, to try something me. different. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to, I'm going well, to chop soon, up man. some drums. Yeah. Take care. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to come back and listen to how it comes together after in, on the VOD. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> to it. Yeah, I hope you have a good one. Right on, man. Yep. Hey, thanks everybody for uh, having me today. Toxic, really good to chill. Wolves, right on, right on. Talk to you all later. Yep. Take care. I'm still here, later, but man. take take care to you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See ya. Bye. Bye, man. Well, that was fun. Now it's just me. I don't know what to do. Um. <clears throat> I am going to mute the super saw because that goes on forever. 
Um, but yeah, this this that was that was fun. That was an interesting way of approaching music production is to have somebody live with you. And I don't know if Slam House, if you're still here, but you're on the short list for trying something like this too. We need to get a better way of managing everything. But like, I I definitely want to do more stuff like that. Uh, because I think that it's super neat. And this is too obnoxious to have on there. So I'm just going to chop up these drums because I feel like... I, I don't like leaving a drum loop just the way it is. Especially one that I... Uh, I was going to say stole, but it's not stolen. I purchased it. It's just a pre-rendered pre kind of thing. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, I, I feel like my style's a little a little different in this one just because like it was such a different uh, initial production process, you know. But yeah, that's that's cool. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna we're just gonna chop this up. It's only you know it's only eight bars or four bars or whatever. <clears throat> can always do stuff like this too and pitch shift it okay does this sound obnoxious or neat that sounds pretty good um, I feel like these need to be louder. So yeah, I, I, I think like the tone of this song is, uh, is kind of, we've, we've established where we're going on that front too, which is also very useful. We just kind of like, we have, we have kind of the establishing shot here and we have like this kind of moment of tension and then now we're like running from a cave in or, or whatever. Uh, if we want it to be, if we want it to be obnoxious. Um, it's like there's a watch out in here somewhere. We're not, I don't think I want to use that, but it's kind of funny. Um, <laughs> although it is kind of, it is kind of funny. <laughs> No, I must resist. Um, <clears throat> the save timer? Uh, it's going to go off in 7 minutes and 45 seconds. It's still ticking down. It, it, it might have gone off when, when, uh, when Shaka was talking. Uh, speaking of which, I can remove that because he's no longer here. Big chillin' question mark. Um... Right? Ah, I didn't want to do everything. There we go. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go back and I'm going to, um redo this line to line up with everything else so it's a little bit it's a little tedious but you know that's just it's the price you pay and you know i i really do like chopping drums but it can be kind of obnoxious sometimes actually i actually really like that whoop All of these have to have like some big obnoxious um, pitch shifted thing. So let's do that. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Perfect, let's make that a little quieter. Problem with that kind of stuff is it gets loud real fast. Okay, we're getting there, almost done. Oh, that's too much. Let's just leave that the way it is. <clears throat> we can do the traditional. There we go. And then we can low, low pass or low cut that. And maybe maybe the this part of the song is just going to be this and then we can go on to some other stuff, you know, who knows. Okay, the other thing we're missing is the super saw. Which really kind of rounds everything together. Can throw an auto filter on that too to give it a little bit more motion. And again, like we need to figure out some way to to bring all of this together because it feels like the drums are kind of floating on top of everything else, which shouldn't be how it is. That's a pretty neat loop though. So the next thing we have to do is go back and uh, line all this up, which is not gonna be super fun, but you know, shouldn't take too long. Shouldn't take too long. And this is the, this is like where a lot of the, a lot of the, um, time goes when you uh make these types of songs <laughs> um because you have to go in you have to dial in all this minutia which is valuable it's super valuable but it's also like a lot of work i might actually keep this one separate and that kind of stinks too ableton So less fun, but it has to be done because like, this is, this is the important part. Like if you're doing this type of music, you got to make sure that you are being clear and accurate with how you approach it. And they can deviate, but not always.
Yep. Yep, less fun, but has to be done. I don't know. Like, it's not, it's not like it's hard. Like, this is going to take, what, five minutes? I'm sure I whined about it longer than it's actually going to take me to do it. I'll just leave that as it is. Just because that's, like, a big effect. Most of this is the same. Remember to save. There you go, Toxic. You're free. Also, everybody remember to save. Okay, this auto filter is way too much. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. Like, what happens if we go back to this? And you can... It's another classic thing that I tend to do, but... I actually kind of like that. It's just like this burst of energy in the middle of nowhere, you know? Thing, since we're calling this mineshaft fairies, fairies are generally, uh, depending on the lore in which you tend to follow, they're more mischief makers than helpers. So maybe they're leading you into trouble instead of away from it. doing to F major again. I'm not going to do it. I'm not contractually obligated to always go C minor to F major. What am I doing? That's what I'm trying to go. 
But maybe I don't want to. Alternatively, let's try this. Actually, let's do, do, do. One thing we can do, and I think this might work really well, is to, to preserve some of the energy that we built up, but really a lot, a lot of it's just gonna kind of float away sublimate away if I were to use a five dollar word um, actually take a lot of this maybe or at least the arpeggiator from it yeah so I think this will work because it'll, it'll allow us to keep that energy without um, without like I don't know the right words. Sorry, my brain kind of shut off. I was I was on for so long with Shaka, and now it's like, oh, how do words work? Um, Back writing big project again? Yeah. No, I mean, like that's that's the the coolest thing about this is just like you know, if I if I can help inspire other people to do the things they want to do, like awesome. I think that works pretty well. Oh, what is happening here? I mean, no, that's that's good, right? You know, you 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 have the ability to set something aside and like not obsess over it. Kind of jealous of that because like sometimes I get a little too obsessive about these projects. Like with Let the World Forget Us, I was so obsessed with like finishing it because I needed to finish it. And if I didn't finish it, I'd go crazy. And like, I didn't go crazy. Like I just, I kind of obsessed over it and it's not super healthy, <laughs> but I'm glad it's done. That's actually really pretty. Aside from that last chord that I screwed up. So let's fix that. What are, where did I go wrong? we need drums for this yeah yeah there's so many it's it's like 
I, I totally get that. Like, it's so important to give yourself, like, a break and space. But, like, sometimes you just got to finish a thing just to get it out of your mind. And, like, that's that's one of the th reasons why I'm so focused on, like, my release schedule is just so bananas for the next year and a half because there's so many projects that I want to get out of my head and just, like, done with. Um, it's just, like... I don't know, like, it's hard. Oh, I got a message on Discord. Oh, okay. So where does the song go now? Like, narratively, we have this kind of like approach or establishing kind of a tension builder. We have like some action or some like movement. Now it's just like maybe you're stuck and you don't know where to go. I mean, this is going to be a shorter song, but I kind of expected it to be anyway. We get to like two and a half minutes or three minutes. That's all I care about. Why does that sound so different? Did I accidentally mess that up? Yeah. The auto filter killed all the high end. Let's just get rid of that. It's not it's not really helping me at all. Heartbeat, heartbeat kicks. The most generic thing in the world, but I'm going to actually use a different sample for this. Honestly, like, I, I'm fine using a different sample. I think it'll work better. Um, uh, Multipacks. Where is this? Anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. I appreciate you uh, coming along with me on my little experiment with uh, with Shaka. I think that that I think that overall that worked pretty well. Like I know that I got a bit distracted, but I knew I would be. Um. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that overall that that worked really well though, and I'm and I'm glad that we were able to give it a try. Okay, so this is every two bars. I think that's that's a good addition to this.
Um, my intention was just to just to see something different. Generally, on Tuesdays around the time I started this stream, I talk with Shaka Panda. Like I just kind of sit down and chat with him for thirty minutes to an hour. Um, but since Toots is having her surgery tomorrow to get fixed, like I'm not going to be around. So I figured I'd stream today and I was like, you know what, let's just merge the two. Um, so that's, that's kind of the impetus for that. Like, I just wanted to try, just try something different. And I think that it worked all right. Um, like I, I do think that I was more distracted, um, than I normally would be, but that's fine. I'm always kind of distracted during these streams anyway, so it's not like that's a big change of pace. Remember to save. That's better. Yep, distraction, abstraction. This is mostly just for color than anything else. Where do we go now? Like, narratively, what do you think? Like, do you kind of, like, turn into a ghost? Do you, like, did the did the fairies you fairies lead you into trouble and you, you, like, passed away and you turned into a ghost and now you haunt the mineshaft? That might be kind of interesting. A little macabre, but, you know. Because <laughs> that allows me to, to bust out my, my theremin, which, you know... Well, my theremin, which is always a fun time. <laughs> I kind of like that idea, though, where you get basically got lured. Yeah, exactly. Excuse me, Ableton? Are, are you okay? Do you, do you need a little break? Do you need a nappy? Oh, copied the wrong one. And Ableton pooped the bed. Who would have thought? I don't know. It's not fancy. Oh, excuse me. It's not fancy, but it's nice.
Okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, Purple. And that's, that's like the whole reason why I do these streams is because I want to like demystify the the like the magic behind making music. Because it's like, yes, there there is a lot of like technical things that happen while making music, but there's also just a lot of you know decision makings and like those de decisions are the interesting thing like we could have gone in a million different directions with this song but like through the collaboration with us just sitting and talking i think i think we came to a really interesting like place with this and i think that's really cool yeah no we don't need that we don't need to revisit those like one of one of my big my biggest influences is Bob Ross and his Joy of Painting series, um, and that's like something that really inspired me to do this whole stream. And I I think that um, you know the thank you toxic the the whole point of Bob Ross's uh, show was to demystify the the process of painting and like break it down into systems that actually people could like digest and understand and i think that that's so like cool and important and i want to make that available to other people and like making music is fun even if you're not like an expert at it you can still uh derive joy from it you know Actually, yeah, let's get let's get funky with it. I actually really like that kind of strange movement there. Okay, so it'd be like messing with arpeggios is kind of a dark magic. Let's try that. Yeah, and so like I'm I'm hearing this right here. Oops. So everyday sounds is what isolated during the creation yeah and I, I think that that's another fun way of approaching like music it's just like now you hear all of these individual pieces together and you can kind of understand how they fit together and it's not just like the finished product you can actually hear like all the little bits and pieces um and like i think that that's one of the most valuable things that the joy of painting did is it broke those steps down and to be like to make a tree you make a blob and then you add the highlights and then like you do all of this stuff and it's like it's very very it's easy to do once you understand the steps but the steps are so like incomprehensible you didn't you don't you can't learn it on your own you have to like have somebody kind of guide you along the way i kind of want to like lean into this little loop here yeah, and like all of this is is transferable to other styles of music too. And that's the cool thing where it's just like it's all like relational. And I think that that's it's it's really amazing like how music works. I 
don't really know what I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of screwing around. I think if we get like a cool drum beat under this. I don't even know if we need that. Let's try it just with this. Need like a really, really uh, tight snare drum. I'll just stick with this pack because I stick with this pack every time. That's good. That mine again with a new frame of mind. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, jeez. Let's uh, clean that up a little bit, huh? There we go. Um, yeah, maybe maybe the ghost is coming coming back for revenge. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if the claves will fit here anymore. Actually, they might work on like the is it directly in your face? Yes. I don't know. I mean, this is this is like some kind of exorcist vibes right now, <laughs> right? Was that exorcist or was that is it Friday the Thirteenth? I can't remember. Um, kind of like this too. It's kind of obnoxious. This is definitely going in a weird place. Did I have to do that by hand? No. Am I proud that I did and things are mostly on the grid? Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to introduce this and then I'm going to bring this stuff in. Oop. Join. Duplicate. Yeah, we can even we can even go a little bit further here and like we can bring the the fairy sound back and then it gets like <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey Butter, please don't step on the power button. Thank you. Remember to save. Hi, Butter. I know. You just want all the crinkly things, but you can't have any of the crinkly things. You can't. Here, look at the camera. Say hi to twos of people, or, or just try to eat my cable. <laughs> you little stinker. Anything. Anything that's not nailed down. Here. There you go. Hi, buddy. Oh, boy. What do I have left for time? Oh, 15 minutes. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if this song's really going to go anywhere beyond this, but that's okay. I'm going to lower the volume on these just a little bit because it is getting a little repetitive. But I think one thing we can do... Um, can maybe like uh, augment the arpeggio a little bit. Yeah. Actually, it would just be this. There we go. <laughs> We're just just going ham on everything now, huh? Oh, that's because of this. Okay. I was like, what is going on? So now it's like the ghost getting revenge. I don't know. <laughs> do like a weird shepherd's tone with this too maybe where it always feels like it's rising up Ableton please just work with me for one second
Okay. So this 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 has gone a little off the rails, but <laughs> that's okay. So like where does where does this song go now? Does it just kind of linger here or do we try to gracefully end this song in some way? Like we have kind of this build up. And maybe we it just kind of builds up and then it just kind of fades away again. I don't know. I think that's kind of compelling to me where it's just kind of like this big build up and then it's like, oh wait, no, we're both ghosts. We can't actually hurt each other. <laughs> that's really dumb. I like that. We're both spirits. I don't think fairies are ghosts. So we gotta duplicate all this stuff out. Oh wait, no, that's not the cutoff. Yeah, and that's kind of what I'm thinking, Toxic, where this just kind of just goes to here, and then it's just like, oh wait. <laughs> and then it just kind of simmers. Maybe they become friends. Maybe any maybe in the end all the fairy wanted was a friend. I veto that. <laughs> Again, it's kind of an abstract ending, but that's okay. Doesn't really give it a, 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 a chance to breathe though, right? It's 
a little better. Let's go back to the original chord progression too. Yeah. Oop, I guess I should get both of them, huh? It's always good to like kind of reiterate the intro which makes you feel like I had this planned all along which obviously I didn't Exactly. And since this is a piano, we can like ripple these chords out a little bit. Mm. Or I can just play them again. It's not like they're hard. Although the second time around, aren't they different? Am I going to run out of time? Yeah, maybe. Okay, I think I got it. We'll see. fix that one in post <laughs> um there we go are these off or am i off oh the um the instrument has like an attack to it so it should also fade this um I'm gonna make this piano a little less bright uh, I was gonna say I need to fade these uh, little thumpies out so I'm just gonna throw a utility on here easier that way That's nice. Did I crop off? Remember to save the sustain. I did not. Hey, everybody, remember to save. Cat here on my nose. Okay, um, I think we are done. There's some there's some fun things we can do. We can like throw a little bit of panning on this. Not a lot, but enough to make it feel like something is happening. Since these are kind of doing the same thing, like splitting them off a little bit, might be neat. 
We could also... Oh no! Having a quiet ghost solo at the end. I don't know, I think that might kind of uh, tie everything together. Please just let me choose zero. I know, Toxic. Things come together at the end. Things always kind of come together at the end. Like... And that that's just... It's its very difficult to, like, judge that kind of stuff because you're, you're so focused on, like, building the parts of the song and then once those parts are built, it's just kind of like playing with Lego. Where it's just like, oh, I can take this piece and this piece and you just snap them together and like, ah, yay. Um, but, you know, also this little bit here with the arpeggio kind of catapulting the song into a completely different direction again um, definitely helped too. So, like, you know, it, there's a lot of happenstance that, that, that goes on with this kind of stuff too. Um, if I had more time, I would maybe screw around with this drum stuff. I could just for the sake of uh, trying it, go like this. But I think that might be too much. Are you saying like the ghost solo? So what you're saying is to basically leave this the way it is, but then include another bit afterward that is an additional theremin solo, or are you saying to go like this? How does this line up? Let me let me get this to line up properly before I Okay. I okay. What I'm gonna do then is I am going to include the chords just so I don't lose track of both the like the the, the harmonics as well as the rhythm, or maybe just kind of do your own thing. Oh wait, no, I I faded everything out. Fool. Okay. We can have this fade out. That's kind of a neat idea.
Okay, yeah, actually, we're good right here. And then this can, like, get faded out. So it's kind of, like, just persisting. I'll bring the, the little cave droppies in, too, because I think that that's important. That's kind of nice, actually. Um, I like that idea. Thank you, Toxic. And that's that's really what I love about like the collaborative nature of doing this, where it's just like, yeah, I I I I'm the conduit, but I'm not exactly like all of the ideas that happen, and like that I would not have thought of that. And narratively, it kind of fits really well. We could also bring this back too at the end. I'm coming to get you. I'm not going to do that. It's a little too distracting. Um, maybe right here, but even then. This is this is not this is not a good idea. I don't think I don't know how loud this is gonna be. <laughs> um just at the end, just be like Hey Hello Luke Hey Listen There it is. Just be like Oh, where is it? I haven't used this before that much. Listen. Yeah. Sorry. Ruining everything. A lot of layers in this one, but that's okay. I'm also trying to find like how long the water drops echo. Okay, let's get rid of that one. Okay. That's right here is fine, I think. Okay. I need to do a really quick uh, volume check on this. Remember when this is part of the song too? <laughs> we'll listen to the whole thing in a second. I just need to clean this up. This song is a fever dream. the wrong way to consume alcohol. Oh, Ron Swanson. I need to watch that show again. Cool. 
Okay, we'll listen to the whole song because I honestly do not remember the first half of this. Uh, and then we'll get going. Is anybody else streaming right now? I gotta get better at doing raids. Nobody I know. Actually, what's Ren doing? Watching an ad. Let's watch an ad. So Rin is an art streamer. She does drawing, but it looks like she's playing, uh... What the hell is she playing? What does it say? Paella? Palaya? Palaya? Yeah, we'll give her a raid. Why not? Right. That part of the song happens. Uh, let's tweak the volume on this again. Yeah, it must be. This is a neat song, though. It definitely goes places. forgot about that uh, G major in there. That G major is really cool. I'll talk about that for a second once this is done. I can also ease this in a little bit more. weird it's such a weird song which is fine like I, like I said like I've been I've been so focused on being like a tryhard a sweaty tryhard when it comes to making music and I just need to like do weird crap like this and I think it'll be good for my soul I want to do something here timing right on this that's better okay remember to save hey everybody remember to save it is it, it's like the narrative of the song this is like a really lonely ending. <laughs> All that's left is the ghost like sitting in a in a cavern by itself with the dripping water. It makes me a little sad actually. 
I can also like curve off, carve off some of the top of this. There we go. It's subtle, but yeah, kind of makes me, it kind of makes me sad. But you know what? Don't mess with fairies. They'll heck you up. No, it's all good. Like I, I love a song with a narrative, and that's what we did. So like do not feel bad about that like i this is like the stuff that i want to make we called this mineshaft fairies cool well guys thanks so much let's go back over to rin just to make sure that she's not like okay she's gonna continue streaming <laughs> i hate that when you raid somebody and you're like okay bye um, so yeah, guys, thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. I had a lot of fun today. It was a lot of experimentation and kind of doing different things, but it, it means a lot to me to be able to just try new things and hang out and hey, look, a mine shaft. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to get going. Rin is, is a very sweet person. We've talked a couple times, but really she just kind of does a lot of like art streaming. Like she draws stuff like that. Uh, I think it's related to League of Legends. I really don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to get going. Uh, if you aren't following the channel, consider doing so. It means a lot to me if you do both here on Twitch and on YouTube, if you're watching it there. Um, but otherwise I'll be back later possibly this weekend to do more stuff and that's it so i'm gonna get going uh love you guys bye love the song title too i do too so yeah oh thank you so much wolves um when you come in on the next stream i'll give you a little piano because you deserve piano for supporting the channel so remind me to do that and i definitely will so um yeah, thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate I don't know why I'm looking at the camera. The camera's off. But thank you guys so much. I mean it. So I'm going to get going, and I'll see you later. Everybody say hi to Rin.